welcome to Michelle Sews Again. I'm Michelle. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It is a hashtag Friday Sews kind of a day. So I want to thank Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for starting this hashtag. Um, I will link her channel below, which I do in every Friday Sews. And basically what the premises of this premise is of this hashtag is it's about the sewing community and it's really pretty fabulous. Um, you, if you do a search on Friday Sews, you're going to meet all kinds of sewists that are sharing the things that they've, well, in general, the format is um, that they share the makes that they've made over the past week, they share what they have planned coming up in the near future, and then they tell you a little bit about life. And that's the format that I use. So if that sounds interesting to you, then hang on, let's get started. All right, so what have I made this week? I didn't do a, well, I guess it, it's a decent amount. It feels like an unproductive week, but when I write it down, it's actually not that bad, um, especially for somebody who works full time. So uh, the first thing that I made, this is gonna annoy you, I can't tell you about it. It's um, a secret pattern, and hopefully I'll be able to tell you about it soon. So sorry about that, but if you're curious, then stay tuned for more um, in the near future. The second thing that I made was um, I tie-dyed some fabric. Um, if you didn't see that video, I filmed a dialogue. So I filmed the process that I used to get this fabric. So if that sounds interesting to you, then click on the link above. Um, but I bought some, it's a three and a half ounce lightweight linen from fabrics-store.com. And I bought it in the bleached, you know, I think it's it was a bleached ivory. It looked close to white, um, but I ice dyed it and I used three colors. I used watermelon, uh, lemon yellow, and orchid. And you can see here, what's so cool about tie dyeing, I'm sorry, ice dyeing specifically, is that the way that the ice pushes the powder dye through the fabric, it causes the colors to kind of split from their um, from the final color. So you can see here, I've got some blues in here. I, I didn't use any blue. So that blue is splitting out probably from the orchid, I would say, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I just love, I'm gonna post a bigger picture here, um, but um, I love the way that came out. So I made that this week. My plans for that are to make a Marcel dress um, and that may or may not happen this week. The next thing that I made was um, I used the other tie-dye fabric or ice dye fabric that I made a couple of weeks ago um, and I used these like blues and greens and oranges and bright you know just lots of fun colors um, and I got lots of I just oh my gosh Every time I look at this, I see a new section that just like thrills me. Um, so I made the Sinclair poppy pants um, and they fit me, y'all. I didn't have to like make any adjustments to this at all. I'm gonna be doing a review on this coming up soon. Um, but yeah, um, so I'll insert a picture of me wearing these. Um, oh my gosh, I love them so much. So I made those. And um, I have on my coming up list, I have something I'm gonna make to wear with those. And then the other thing that I've worked on this week is I continue to work on my fabulous abacus shawl. So this is my knitting project and I'll insert a couple of pictures here because it's really hard to show it um, all in one here. Um, I've gotten past the halfway mark so you can see that little apex there um, is the halfway mark. So I'm on the side where I'm decreasing now. Um, and um, if you haven't seen before, um, you know, it's this, it's this shawl pattern that's got these eyelet um, repeats in it. In the first section, I'm using this um, Madeline Tosh 
color is called flash dance. And then the next section, you mix your first color and your second color. And my second color is a Cascade 220 fingering yarn in like a lime green. I'll link all the yarns below. The only one I can't link is this next one. So this next section, you mix the lime green with the, um, I have a multicolor that I'm using for my third color. Um, and you mix those two. So it's like alternating rows of the lime green and the multicolor. And then you do a panel of just whatever your third color is. Mine happens to be a multicolor. Yours doesn't have to be. Um, and this is the yarn that's not available anymore. But there's so many, there's so many stunning hand dyed yarns on Etsy, which I'm pretty sure is where I got this one. Um, and it's just, oh my gosh, it's so squishy and like, oh my gosh, I love it. Um, so that is the middle section, and now I'm on this section where I'm mixing the multicolor with the purple, and then the next section will be the purple with the lime green again, except it'll be um, opposite, so I don't know if you can tell here. There's um, four rows of purple to two rows of lime green, so on this side, it'll be the opposite. It'll be four rows of the lime green and two rows of the purple, so it'll still be the same color mix. It'll just be in the opposite pattern. And then the last, very last section will just be the lime green. So, um, and then at the end, you put tassel, well, they're optional. You put tassels on the apex and then on the two ends. And I, I'm so excited. It's, it's working up pretty fast. It's working up a lot faster this time than it did the first time I tried it before I ripped it all out. And that's because I Googled a couple of stitches that I didn't know what I was doing. So, I was doing the yarn over wrong, and then I was doing the SSK wrong. <laughs> because I thought I knew what I was doing. I did it on my own. I didn't look up those stitches. Um, I made sure I um, YouTubed a couple of tutorials for each of those stitches, and that made all the difference. And now it's just going whoop, whoop. All right, um, so those are the things that I have made this week. What is coming up? So, um, What's coming up is I am making a cashmere Concord tea, and I'm making it in this beautiful, like, um, turquoise blue, marine blue, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, it's a double brush poly from Joann's. It's super soft and cozy, and I'm, you can see this is just what I have left. I've already got it cut out. I just need to sew it up, and that's what's going to go with the with these poppy pants so i'll have this concord tea and you can see it matches like some of those blues like perfectly so um i'm going to make this short sleeve scoop version um i'm going to pop a an insert here i had done a concord tea um, a few months ago and I reviewed it and I really liked the fit of that tee, but my cuffs, I had done the, yeah. the mid-length sleeve and my cuff was a hot mess on there and I couldn't figure out what I did wrong. Well, as I was cutting this one out and I knew I wanted to make the short sleeve, I realized that I had cut the cuff out for the short sleeve and put it on the mid-length sleeve. And obviously you um, need less of a cuff for the mid length than you do for a short sleeve and so my my that's why my cuff was too long and it put in it like splayed out it was just ugly so now i know what i did wrong so now i know how to fix it and i won't make the same mistake with this one okay the next thing that i am working on is um i want to fix the straps on my wide strap maxi um I, I'm going to do a review on this. This is the Peppermint Patterns um, free wide strap maxi dress. Um, and I, I made it in this Ankara um, that I got from House of Mami Wada. It is so, like, once you wash it, like, that's out of all the Ankaras that I've bought over the last, what has it been, month, um, the ones that I've gotten from House of Mami Wada are by far the most superior. Um, this one, like once you wash it, look how like it's got drape, it's got movement, it's like it, it feels nice. And look at that pattern. It's just gorgeous. I love those colors. Um, but when I made the dress, um, and I'll pop in some pictures of me wearing it, 
The straps are way too wide set for me. Um, so they're slipping off. I've um, got some feedback that it looks like I probably have sloping shoulders, which was kind of an aha for me. Um, and I didn't put enough, I, I made the elastic band for the back to, it, it doesn't have enough scrunch. I made it too long. So the back is a little bit loose on me. So I am in the process of unpicking. I've already unpicked that. So my I've got my elastic out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to shorten the strap so that it, you know, it pulls in like it's supposed to. And then the straps, I've got some good feedback on how to, um, without completely resetting the whole thing, I'm going to take, I'm going to unpick the back and I'm going to kind of bring them in at an angle. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. So that's on my list for the upcoming week, weekend. Um, my Concord tea. Uh, and then the only other thing that I really have in my immediate future is I really need to clean and organize my sewing room. I'm going to pop in a little video here. You can see um, it's, it's pretty messy right now. I, and I have, when I'm ready to like get on like a sewing binge, I can't do it if my, if my room is so cluttered and chaotic. So I need to organize my fabrics again. Um, I've bought too much. I have room for it all. I need to go through and like organize those cubbies. Um, and so that's like a main thing that I need to do, but you can see there's clutter in like every corner. So that's definitely on my um, short term radar. And once I get it all cleaned up, then I will take you on a tour of my sewing room. It's not huge, but um, it works for me unless it's chaotic like it is right now. So um, yeah, I love to see other people's sewing rooms. So I thought that might be fun. So if you think you would like that, let me know in the, in the comments and I'll be sure to do that. All right. Um, so that's what's on my coming up list. And then what, so, so what have I bought this week? So I have a fabric haul that I just posted a couple of days ago. I'll put a link to the uh, in the cards here to that if you're interested. I bought 19 yards of fabric um, from a handful of different um, vendors or you know uh, fabric shops. So um, that is going to be my final fabric haul, like massive fabric haul for the year. Because as I've mentioned before, we're working toward buying a house or building a house. We're not sure which yet. And that comes with quite a lot of expenses. So um, I have more than enough fabric to get me through the end of the year. So I'm not saying I'm not gonna buy any more fabric, but I'm not buying in big like lots like I have been um, this year. Um, so let's see. Uh, and then the only other thing I've, I've bought one new pattern this week and it is the Carmen pattern from Dongo Designs. It's a German company. And I bought it because I, I'm going to make that pattern for the um, Sew Your Name Challenge that me and some of my fellow sewing YouTubers are hosting over on Instagram. Um, so it is Mari from Mari Sews, Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room, Carmen from Carmen Salome, and Heather from Textile Tailored Thoughts. We're all hosting this Sew Your Name Challenge over on Instagram. The reveal date um, is next week. It's the 22nd through the 28th. If you've already made yours and you want to post it, please feel free. Um, you know, there's no prizes. It's really just for fun. Um, we thought it was fun trying to find a pattern with our name on it. Um, I've already made my Michelle top. I'm going to post that on the 22nd. Um, but for those of you that aren't aware, my name, my full name is actually Carmen Michelle. So my parents, I was named Carmen after my grandmother. My mom always wanted to call me a French name. So Michelle is where it came from, is where that came, that came from that concept. And um, they didn't feel like Michelle Carmen flowed very well. So she knew she wanted to call me Michelle, but she wanted to name me after my grandmother. So Carmen Michelle is my name. Um, anyway, so... I already made the Michelle and I thought um, it would be fun to make a Carmen 
um, pattern as well. And I found this really pretty um, blouse that um, is right up my alley. It's got um, shirring at the waist, which I'm not gonna do because I don't like things like really tight around my waist. So I'll just leave that off and hem the bottom. But I really like the tie at the neck and the big flowy billowy sleeves. And I think it's just gonna be um, a beautiful top. So um, I, the fabric that I'm gonna use for it, I showed it in my fabric haul. So if you're interested in that, go check that video out. All right, so then here is my Pinterest uh, insp pin pinspiration. Is that what they call it these days? So um, here's a picture of the coveralls that have inspired me. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna work it in, but I just love the color combination and the color blocking on these coveralls and the fact that they're not full length, they're a little bit cropped. Um, and so I definitely wanna make something in that vein. I'm not gonna copy it exactly, but I like how it's inspired me to make some coveralls that um, might be a little bit more fun. Um, all right, and then life. Uh, I don't have a lot going on. <laughs> My life has been a little bit boring this week, which I'm okay with. I don't need to be, you know, doing something all the time. I do have something brewing um, that um, I'm hopefully going to have an answer on next week that maybe I'll be able to share with you in next week's Friday shows. So if you're curious about what that might be, then join me next week. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I don't have much else going on. So um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on anything that I've mentioned, um, any of the patterns that I've made, um, anything that I have planned coming up. What do you have going on? What have you made this week? What are you planning to make? I'd love to hear, your, hear what's going on with you. So join me in the comments. I'd love to interact with you. And um, if you like this concept and you like this uh, format of videos, I do have a link right here to my um, playlist for all my Friday sews. Um, and I encourage you to go and check out the hashtag in the search bar on YouTube and check out other sewers that are also participating in Friday sews. It's a lot of fun. Wherever you are, I hope that the weather is fantastic and I hope that you're able to get some sewing in. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.